This is Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom, words on leadership, goal setting, productivity, and a whole lot more. I trust today that this will be like a vitamin or a supplement for your mind and heart. And wherever you receive podcasts from, would you please subscribe to Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom? Leave a rating and a brief written review. It will enable others to locate this podcast. I'm looking for the next level of leaders that I can come alongside and assist and coach. And if you would like to consider the possibility, go to drronblake.com forward slash call. drronblake.com forward slash call. You'll get on my calendar and I'll give you a call. I want to talk today about being a growing leader. There are lots of kinds of things you can do as a leader. Leadership seems to have no bounds. You, you need, we need leaders in every area of life. But I want to speak to you today a little bit about the subject of being a growing leader. How do I make sure that as a leader, I am growing? Well, one of the things that I want to do is I want to start with a quote. And, it's, and the quote is, whoever wants to be the leader among you must be your servant. That is a quotation from Jesus. If you want to be the head, if you want to be a leader, if you want to be in charge, the road to the top is bending down, serving, getting on your knees, loving others, helping others, being a servant, serving others. A growing leader is a person who intrinsically understands that it's all it's not all about me. It's about how can I help others? How can I serve others? How can I make the lives of others better? The life of the organization I'm a part of better? And how can I make the world a better place in which to live? That isn't the idea of I've come so that you can serve me because I'm important. But the fact is, I'm going to show my growth in my heart and my mindset by being a servant leader. You have to grow yourself if you're going to be the leader that you really, really need to be. We, we need leaders desperately in our world today who add value to others, who aren't always looking for what they can extract from a group or an organization but rather what can they contribute. So there are several things that go into being a growing leader, but I think foundational is, are you a servant? Are you willing to serve others? Are you willing to serve them selflessly? Are you willing to put your whole heart into it? But there are so many, many other things uh, that go into it. Uh, Part of growing a leader is leaders are grown they're not born. Babies are born. Leaders are grown. And you you have to develop uh, some skills. Um, To be the best leader you're capable of being, and uh, you don't have to compare yourself to anyone else, uh, there's always something new that you're going to have to master. The the world is changing uh, so rapidly, as you are all aware, that we cannot just rest on past experiences, past training, we have to take the mindset of a of a person who needs to get better, needs to learn other things. I, I think another part of a growing leader is a person who has developed a growth mindset. A growth mindset can look at the challenges and and not be overwhelmed, but say, I may not know all that I need to know, but I know that I can learn. I may not have all the information, but I know that I will be able to find it. I may not have that competency that is needed at this moment to excel at what I am working on, but I know that I can acquire that skill if I learn and apply myself and continually practice it. Don't get into a mindset, a limited mindset that says, well, this is all I can do, I no more. This is it. I can't get out of this box. If you're going to be a growing leader, you have to have a growth mindset that says, I may not know how to do that, but but I will learn how to do it. I, I would even advise you, whenever it is that you sit down and kind of look at goals for the future, 
make acquiring a skill or developing a new habit and part of your goal setting project because it stretches you. It forces you into a growth mindset to get out of that area of which you already have expertise and, and learn some new things. And this is much like goal setting, acquiring a new skill or habit. As important as the skill and habit is, the process is where we are changed. One of the things that another thing that a growing leader does is they are people who are able to learn from their environment. And your environment is your past, your present, what other people are doing, lessons you've learned formally when through educational exercises and experiences. But one of the greatest teachers I have found in my life is my experiences. And by that, I mean most often it, it's times even when things didn't go well, that, that failure or something not working out really gave me uh, some insight maybe into myself, to others, what does work, what doesn't work. And, and so a lot of folks think, well, no one wants to hear what I say. There is no one else in the world that has your experiences. You are unique. And you have learned life lessons that have grown you. And we need you to share those with us so we can learn about them as well. Now, it's not just enough to focus on the past and what you what you learned from things that have happened, both positive and maybe even negatively. But don't be so focused on the future that you're not present in the day you're living. Uh, those who are really goal-oriented have to watch this quite a bit because it's so easy to keep focused on where I'm going. Um, I, I've talked to, to many folks who, because they are so knee-deep where they, where they are, that when you have conversations with them, they're always telling you what they're going to improve, where they need to recruit, where the challenges are, where there is needed change. And oftentimes I get to go back and visit places and I say to the leader, can I say something as sort of an inside outsider who is not here living under the burden every day as you are, but someone who periodically drops in? And as someone who periodically drops in, I can't believe the changes that have happened. I can't believe the progress you're making. For many times, if you're focused on the past or you're focused on the future, you forget to really live in the day. And though everything isn't just exactly the way you want it, not everything has been accomplished that you've set out to accomplish, but every once in a while, we just need to throw our shoulders back, take a step back, take a deep breath, and take inventory of today. You know, there are lots of things to work on, but we have made a lot of progress as well. And stop and celebrate that. I think leaders should be some of our chief celebration officers who help our organization to realize, yes, we have much to work on, but we're thanking God we've made a lot of progress. One thing that will distinguish a growing leader or another thing that will distinguish a growing leader is when it comes to yourself, set the bar high. Don't compromise. How what can I do better? Where do I need to improve? Uh, I, I meet people once, every once in a while who try to hold everybody in the organization to a high standard and they, and they let themselves slide. Every one of us knows, regardless of what field of endeavor you're in, whether you're in church, not-for-profit, you're an entrepreneur, you're in a corporation, family, we all know people who set the bar high and demanded excellence out of their employees, their families, but their own personal lives and their own leadership were compromised by the fact they allowed themselves to do things that they would not allow others to do. That really needs to be reversed. You need to hold yourself to the highest. If there's a high standard where you are, you need to hold yourself to the, the highest standard. Oftentimes, when you're the leader, we are so um, immersed in trying to figure out the problem, 
trying to uh, come up with solutions, trying to help the organization move forward and get better. And we are always looking at who needs to improve, who needs to pick up the pace, who are the folks that are kind of weighing us down. And I, and I often would love to ask, so I'm going to ask it today. I'm raising my hand to ask you a question. When you're looking at your family, your friends, your not-for-profit, your, your business, your enterprise, and things are wrong, have you ever stopped to consider and ask the question, have I done anything that contributes to this? While we're looking at others and what they have contributed, it's always good. A growing leader always checks in with themselves and always checks their own heart. Am I doing all that I can do? Another thing that a growing leader will do, which helps them to grow, is they keep asking questions. If you keep asking questions, what you communicate to your folks is, I don't know everything. Oftentimes, leaders fall into the trap of thinking, I'm to be the idea man or woman when I show up. I'm to be the one who has all of the answers, has it all figured out, and I'm the one who's going to give everyone their marching orders. One of the ways you can improve morale in your organization is go to the people. Go to the people right out there on the front lines and just begin to ask them questions. Are our policies working? Are we doing everything we can to enable you to be and to do the best that you can do? Are there any things that are there things that we are requiring that are inefficient and are maddening to you? Do you have any suggestions on how we could improve, how we could do things better? Keep asking questions because a growing leader will always have a, a, an inquisitive mind. It is almost true that when you stop asking questions, you stop growing. It's not almost true. It's absolutely true. When you stop asking questions, you really stop growing. Now, every leader, including a growing leader, has weaknesses. There are just things that's, that we are much more naturally inclined toward. I have them, and you have them. And so it's always good to figure out what is it that I do that helps to propel my organization forward, and what are the things that I always need to work on? Well, I'm not talking about spending the majority of your time improving your weaknesses, though there are times when we do need to try to improve them. But what I, what I do understand is if you're in a position to hire someone, or even if you're in a volunteer organization, make sure you surround people who are stronger in those weaker areas than you are. Another thing that a growing leader understands is we all make mistakes and we all have failures. There have been times in my life when I rolled out things, and I mean, I investigated, I prayed, I worked it, it was um, ironclad. It was a stroke of brilliance and genius, only to have the whole thing blow up, not work out. There were unintended consequences that we had not considered. And so many leaders are fearful of that. They feel that the people will think there's something missing. Embrace your failure Embrace being human. Everyone else knows you're human, even if you don't know that. It's not the failing. It's not the falling down. It's not even the grievous and costly mistakes that all of us have and will make. What you need to model and what will grow you and grow people around you is when they see you stand up, dust yourself off, Shake, shake it off, walk it off, whatever you need to do. Weather it, learn from it, move ahead, but don't give up. That is the kind of um, leadership that we need to have modeled. And a growing leader not only asks questions, but they learn from others. You can learn something from a small child, the custodian, 
the bus driver, the man who picks up your garbage, the lady at the motel who cleans the room. If you'll engage them, you can learn something, but you have to not be a know-it-all. Learn from others. One of the greatest ways to grow is teaching and growing others. As uh, many of you are aware, I have in my life been pastor. And one of the things that in my church as a teenager that they did, either consciously or unconsciously, is that when we were young teenagers, they gave us young children. Now we had an adult assistant. And they started requiring us at 12 and 13 and 14 to teach Sunday school lessons. I was terrified. But I do think that some of my leadership skills were honed before I learned this invaluable principle. When I teach others, I learn more than the students. I'm beginning to teach a class uh, starting on Monday evening to ministerial students on a particular theological uh, program. And I there's just some exercise about taking time out and teaching others that I will be the one who gains the most because I have to prepare, I have to be ready, I have to have the, the lecture and the notes ready. And so teaching and coaching others is one of the greatest learning tools that will help you grow. At the end of the day, I believe the last thing that I would say to you is make sure that you take time to reflect. Learning and experiences are all good, but you have to reflect and make sure you pull out the nuggets of truth. You've been listening to Dr. Ron's words of wisdom, words on leadership, goal setting, productivity, and a whole lot more. I trust it's been like a vitamin or a supplement for your mind and heart. And wherever you receive podcasts, please, please, please subscribe to Dr. Ron's words of wisdom. If you could leave a rating and a brief written review, it will enable other excellent and astute people like you to find this podcast. Remember my leadership friend, it is really true. You are doing better than you think you are. You really are. And until next time, this is Dr. Ron saying have a great and blessed day.